So this is a bit unusual video for me. It's talking about products, items, things that I use in the garden that really help me. And uh, maybe you could call it, this is advertising. <laughs> so, something I'm not brilliant at, but it is, it's promoting stuff either that we sell or other people sell that I found really good. Uh, this is one that other people sell, but which I designed last year, the module tray. And it's a bit the linchpin of my garden here because we raise in quite a small area in this greenhouse, a lot of seedlings, like 95% of what I grow here starts life in one of these. Actually, it might be 92%, but it's, it's a lot. <laughs> and, and that includes things like multi-sowing. You can even say multi-sow peas in these small amount of compost. Uh, here's a lot of salad plants like winter salad, and they start life in here and they go out from here. And the beauty of this is that it, it's very economical of space, compost, and your time because you're not trying to raise a large plant. There's not a potting on process involved in this. And that's why I recommend it. Um, that's why I made this tray because it, it's also <laughs> a lot of trays before. Oh, I've got examples here. The, um, flimsy plastic and, and these ones are really solid. So that's the beauty of them. And what I'm gonna do now is show you, uh, these are some corn salad that I sow direct and that's why there's some gaps actually, sometimes if the seeds don't all come up. I like pricking out as well, like, you know, these endy for example, they were pricked out and that way you get, always you're sure to get a full tray. But the lettuce was sown direct and I'm gonna pop them out. So you, you can just pop these plants up, the hole's big enough at the bottom. And we're going to see how I use them in conjunction with a dibber to transplant them in the garden. So this is next stage, next product, <laughs> dibbers. The module tray full of plants. And often actually the plants can be smaller than this. So you've got the flexibility we're often putting in transplants when they're average three weeks old so it's three weeks from sowing to having a transplant these are older just because it's winter <laughs> and actually i wasn't even planning to plant these still could though uh, i keep hang on to plants uh, just in case i need them later and they're making a hole for these little plants so if i get one of these out again um, what size hole do you want you can see the the dibber here is a fatter actually than the actual module roots root ball that's fine because what you want is a hole slightly deeper and slightly wider so that it slides in easily and it goes from there to there in the ground and then to actually ensure contact we we don't do a big faffing around or anything but we just push down gently on the compost either side of the plant stem and that's it, job done. And it can be sometimes you're putting in transplants that are quite, <laughs> these are the exact opposite. They, they don't have any stem at all, hardly. But many transplants from the garden have a long stem. And if, if you were doing that, this, this dibber is very versatile. You would simply make the hole deeper, push in a bit more, and then your transplant will, <laughs> not, this is not a good example that I say, but it's disappeared there. Um, but th that's fine to bury a lot of plants deep, but that's where the dibber is so versatile because very quickly, very simply, you can go plump, 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 make your holes, pop in your transplants, and that's it, job done. And compared to, say, using a trowel, it would take a lot longer. So I like this because it's fast, and also on this dibber, we have put spacing. So um, that is six inches, 15 centimeter, that's 22 centimeter, which is nine inches, that's a foot, 30 centimeters, that's 35 centimeters. And so you can use that to line up your spacings. And for salad plants generally, I favor the 22, that's why I put it there. And these are lamb's lettuce a little bit closer than that, so they're not matching that exactly. But you can get the idea, you know, spacing is not geometrical um, precise in gardening, but it's very useful to have a rough spacing to keep you kind of on track and, and it makes sure that your plants get the most out of the space that they're allocated equally all being well. And you can see also here, we've done a thing, this is particular to no dig, where you haven't got any ground preparation. So you could follow one planting with another even before the first planting is finished. And these are Swedes, rutabagas that we've been taking off the outer leaves and that, that keeps them tidy uh, like that. 
and that means it, it also frees up a space for another planting so it works well i found to grow these which we can harvest at any time by just cutting under the roots and that leaves the new planting in this case corn salad to grow and harvest later in the winter and there's one other thing i mentioned actually is these little fungi so we spread homemade compost that's what this is here about three centimeters an inch or so on top of the existing ground and that's feeding soil organisms over the coming year and we've planted the corn salad into and through that compost and let's have a look now at the next stage in this whole thing which is sowing Sowing at the best time makes such a difference and that's why we've created this uh, to hang on the wall and so you, when you buy it like um, off my website you, you'll receive a sleeve so it's got, it's got three parts, there's a bit of writing on the sleeve as well and the actual timeline is a very beautiful thing <laughs> which has, it's folded, we couldn't work out, well we worked out this is the most efficient way to send it by post and then you unfold it and you can sort of get these creases out, stick it on something like a board and uh, hang it on your wall. You've got these reminders and you've also got this beautiful <laughs> radicchio on the other side. I don't know how much you, that will be you, useful to anybody but it's a nice option to turn it over if you want. We, we've accompanied it with a leaflet and so leaflets in here somewhere that has a lot of sort of basic no dig information on and it's also got, you know, just key points about sowing, sowing temperatures, uh, hardening off or not hardening off actually, saving time, a lot of tips about just doing things efficiently and quickly on that leaflet. And here are some of the results, like for example, squashes, uh, crown prints in this case, which sowing time for here between 22nd, 25th of April works really well, but you could go as early as 15th. You're just working out, we're getting a framework of, of sowing dates for each different vegetable will give you more success with your harvest. That's where it's worth really checking these dates. I'll just mention the, these clothing because this is another thing I, I want to remember to promote. Uh, these are printed on organic cotton and it's something we've liaised with T-Mill to uh, produce and they've got these nice slogans, nice drawings. This is my favourite one, it's very comfortable as well. One tip I'll give you is I think they I think that their sizes are slightly small and so that that is a large and I'm normally a medium and I find the large works better so I, I you know maybe buy them a tiny bit bigger this one's a medium it's a little bit tight on me um, but they're fantastic and they'll be they, they'll recycle them when you finish you send them back yeah I'm feeling a bit strange about promoting this product or telling you about it because it's not exactly anything to do with no-dig gardening or growing vegetables but it's many properties do have hedges around we don't have a lot of hedge here actually but I'm grateful for what we do have because then if you've got a good tool like this you can see it's got a good length to it it's battery so it's quiet for that I'm immensely grateful most of the neighbors here have petrol engine hedge trimmers they make such a racket uh, but this does cost around 500 pound I think it's, it's not the cheapest but having said that, I've been waiting to say anything about it. We've used it a couple of years. It's really good. And so I, I can recommend it. And that one too, I bought about six years ago now. And that's made a big difference all the way along because it enables us to uh, convert prunings, like things you cut with that, into compostable material cut and slightly crushed as well. And it works e electric again. So usually... I'm lucky to have the solar panels here, so we, we aim to, it's often are using it when it's sunny. So that's just converting sunlight into power to do that. And just to finish, I'll mention these, because I've worn them for so long now in all my, all my videos, and people do ask sometimes, that's a Muck Boots boot called an RHS Muckster by Muck Boots. <laughs> and it's, you can see how easy it is to take on and off. They're very comfortable, and I find for gardening, they're really good. And actually one of them did split once, and I managed to mend it with a bicycle repair puncture kit because <laughs> they're rubber. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of stuff. <laughs> to find out more, do have a look at the video description, which has links to all the products and things that I've mentioned. <laughs>